Hey folks, what's going on? Arm and Hammer here, and today we're going to be talking about day two at Fittest in Cape Town, as well as a little sneak peek at what to expect on day three. Let's get started. One of the things I talked about in yesterday's video while previewing day two was how Fittest in Cape Town is really good at throwing these interesting little curveballs on the events that they announced. For example, they announced a 400 meter run was one of the events, the first event on the second day of competition, but they also announced that it was going to be a little not traditional, I think is a good way of describing it. And that's exactly what it was. The athletes were taken to an area where essentially it was an uphill trail run that was 400 meters. And for part of it, they had to lug a sandbag. So what we're looking at here is classic fittest in Cape Town. They announce an event, they give you the general framework of what to expect, and then they throw a little bit of a curveball at the end there to just kind of spice it up a bit. And that's exactly what that did. So day two of competition had two events. It was that 400 meter run, as well as this beach event, which included bar muscle ups, single arm overhead kettlebell squats, as well well as this uh, you know paddleboard water event and they didn't let people know that they're gonna be using paddle boards until the morning of the event so that's yet another version of this kind of little detail that's left out when the events are announced that is actually pretty key to execution on the workout itself so after two days of competition the men's leaderboard is topped by the CrossFit cowboy himself Sean Sweeney now Sweeney moved all the way up from fifth to first over the course of that 400 meter run and the beach event. So those uh, obviously went in his direction. I think it's up to him now over the course of the next couple days where there's a little more volume for him to sort of stay in that lead position. Second place is Andre Hude, yet again, stayed in second place. Still no idea if that's how you pronounce his name, but either way, that's really impressive considering the field of competitors that he's up against. And in third place is Street Horner, who actually moved all the way up from 10th after the first day. So impressive performances all around. I think we still have some athletes to keep our eyes on. James Newbury is charging up the leaderboard. Cole Sager has moved up a couple spots. These are all athletes who, once we get into the more traditional or barbell filled workouts, are probably gonna be able to, to gain some ground on someone like you know Sean Sweeney and potentially also on someone like Street Horner. But with six, six events remaining over the next two days, there's a lot of fitness to be tested. On the women's side of the leaderboard, we actually saw something really similar happen as on the men's side. Katrin David's daughter, who you've probably heard of, you know, two-time CrossFit Games champion and darling of the CrossFit community, she moved from fifth to first as well, similar to Sean Sweeney. And I think what we're gonna see now is Katrin is probably not going to be letting go of the lead anytime soon. I think there's definitely some events where she may be pushed by some of the other athletes in the field, but she's so good and so fit. The bird agrees. She's so good. See? Can't can't stop agreeing with me. She's so good. <laughs> <laughs> She's so good and so fit that once she takes that first place spot, it's it's really hard to imagine her letting it go. In second place is Mia Ackerland. She also moved up. She was in fourth place after the first day, is now in second place after the second day. So these events worked in her favor as well. And in third place is Alessandra Pacelli, who moved all the way up from seventh to third. Now, I think the reason why we're seeing these familiar names pop up towards the top of the leaderboard after these specific events is that we actually got to see some more of the types of things that CrossFit Games athletes and high level CrossFit Games athletes are actually able to perform better than a lot of other CrossFitters. And what we're looking at specifically is, you know, grunt work with a, a trail run 400, which included a sandbag carry, as well as this combination of the, the bar muscle ups and the single arm overhead squats with a kettlebell into a water event. I mean, that's a combination that you just don't see in the gym or at regionals, and that's the type of thing that is rewarded when you have experience in those different fields. So upcoming on the third day of competition at Fittest in Cape Town, the individuals are looking at three events. One is Strongman Diane, which is a strongman-esque version of Diane. It's less reps, handstand push-ups, and cleans instead of deadlifts, and it includes some sled work 
after and before. It's a it's a really interesting take on things. I think it's gonna be quick. It's gonna be dirty. It's really going to uh, you know punish the athletes who aren't able to exert themselves in more planes of motion than just deadlifting and or you know moving things up and down. The second and third events on day three are something called the Trap 2019, which I have no idea what it is, but it sounds awesome. So fittest in Cape Town. Just keep doing what you're doing, I guess. And then uh, kind of like a squat clean speed ladder, similar to what we've seen at the games, you know, ascending weights, uh, various heats where everyone goes and then they take the fastest times into the second set of weights and then they take the fastest times into the final set of weights. Crazy enough, the teams actually have five scored events. Five. And we're talking about a pretty wide range of things that they're going to be tested on. I mean, there's like a 400 meter relay workout. There's a workout that includes like uh, maxes, like max snatches and max cleans. And then there's something called the pain train. I don't even know, man. Like, I don't, I don't know, but it sounds awesome. And I'm definitely in. Like I said before, this whole fitness in Cape Town programming style and the way that they announce the workouts but leave out details that, that kind of, you know, throw athletes off of their game. I love that. I think that's a, that's a really elegant way of kind of having the unknown and unknowable, but also still providing some information to these athletes who are out here for the competition. So with two days down at Fittest in Cape Town, there's two days remaining, but these two days, this is where the meat of the competition is. There's more volume and different types of tests than we've seen in the past couple days. And that means it's really difficult to predict who's gonna be in the lead once the competition itself is over. But remember, there's a whole lot going on in our sport and it's easy to miss some of the most interesting and exciting storylines. That's what I'm here for. I will see you guys next time with yet another review and recap and preview of what is going on at Fittest in Cape Town. But before then, I just wanna say thank you so much to everybody for all your support. It's been super cool hearing from everyone and you know all the, the, the likes and the sharing and telling your friends, it, it means a lot to me and I hope you guys are getting as much enjoyment out of this as I am in creating it. So until next time, see you later.